Hello there, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to my channel. And today is August the 9th, 2019, and we are going to look at some of the news today, and then we'll watch maybe a little bit of Pastor Tim and listen to what he says. Um, so let's get on with the news. Um, sorry, I've seen what that was. Um, so let's see. Britain goes all in on the race. Put in cover, covering up nuclear attack. Yeah, there was a huge explosion yesterday in Russia. Um, and first for Arab world, open gay candidate runs for Tunisia presidency. Oh, here we go again with the gay stuff. Um, no, it's crazy, right? Okay, so let's see what Pastor Tim has to say about, let's see, hang on, let's go to YouTube. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, hang on. It's gonna be really loud. Commercial. It's commercial. It's Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Ben and I. was a beautiful daughter, Allie, would be with me soon, and I've got her here. And I am gonna so turn this now. video over to you. Okay, so, well, I missed being here because I haven't been on in, like, forever. Um, but I wanted to talk because I've been personally going through some things, and it really got me thinking the day um, when I was in the shower and I was just in pain. Um, that's probably why I haven't been on in a while. My stomach's been giving me some issues, and taco surgery and everything was coming up, and I kind of just felt like I was drowning. Um, I'm a mom of two kids. I couldn't even keep up. I got to the back where I wasn't able to dry. I was in so much pain. And it really got me thinking. I kept praying and asking the Lord, like, God, will you just please take this pain away? Will you just heal me, Lord? Like, no, you can do that. I know you can heal me. And I truly know he's healed me before. He's healed people in my family before. And so I was just kind of wondering, like, God, where are you? Why are you lifting it? Well, he always listens to us. And it really got me thinking that somebody might need to hear this because I feel like sometimes when we're in such a storm, and trust me, I feel like I've been in every kind of storm lately that I could get into, I feel like sometimes our faith gets a little shifted or we think that the Lord's not even there. And I think it gets some people down to the point where they run away from God. And it got me thinking, like, maybe that's why I'm walking through this storm. So I can tell somebody else, like, not only... Like, I can get on here and tell you that when you go through a storm, don't lose faith, keep praying, God's there, he's listening to you, and we don't know what the answer is, but when it happens, then we can look back and say, wow, God, I wish I would have known that, like, it was your will. But now, I don't want to just tell you that, I want to, I want to be honest with you and tell you, like, I have been going through some things, so I'm not just telling you an encouraging message to lift you up, like, I truly understand this of you. Anybody who has a chronic pain, I'm right there with you. I'm in that same boat, and I'm not even out of that pain yet. But I wanted to tell you now while I'm still in that pain, because I know God's going to take this away. He's either going to bring an amazing doctor in my life, he's going to heal me that way, or he's going to just touch me and heal me that way. And I'm, I know God has a plan for this and a purpose over my life, and I know Satan's trying to put his little head in things. But I wanted to tell you while I'm currently in the storm, that God's still there. And I know God's still there because I feel him. I don't understand it all the time, but I wanted to tell you today, still in pain, still haven't had a great day, but God's there with all of us, and he loves us, but I wanted to tell you now, so that way, you just knew, you can, I feel like God wants you to know how loved you are, he's listening, and sometimes we just need to be willing to accept his plan for us, and I'm not saying God's will is for us to be in pain, but sometimes we're just not listening like God has a plan for us and I know he's gonna take me and I just feel like sometimes like, like God, God leaves us, but what I've learned in my life is he never moves but I have I've moved but God doesn't move and so I just want to get on here I know that's like a little rant but I wanted you to know that when we're walking through a storm God's still there and I wanted to tell you that while I'm still in a storm because I feel like I've just been hit at every angle, but I know God still loves me. I know he's still there for me. And surround yourself with people who are going to tell you that on your worst day. On Sunday, I was thankfully with my dad. I was, it was my worst day that I've had in a long time. And I needed somebody who was a praying man of God or a praying woman of God to surround me in that moment. And 
and let me know how loved I am and how much God loves me because I think sometimes Satan tries to end those moments put little doubts in your head and don't do that today so I'm here to encourage you and I'm here to tell you I'm right there with you I'm in that boat but I'm not only praying for you I'm gonna pray that God breaks through the walls and that Satan can't get his head in it and God has a plan and purpose for you and maybe in that doctor's office you might bring somebody to salvation we don't know um that's happened to me so sometimes I think you know what if I brought one person to Jesus through my pain it was worth it and so I know it's hard to say the word is there with me it humbles me and but also it gives me a heart and I think Every single time when I had postpartum depression, uh, all those other things that, that I'm fine now with that kind of stuff. I have such a heart for people and moms, and I wouldn't have had as much of a depth of understanding if I wouldn't have walked through that. So sometimes I think this will just make me able to reach somebody that's down in a trench because I've been in that trench before too. So I know the Lord's going to take this away for not only me, but for you guys too. So just keep praying and keep surrounding yourself with people who are going to uplift you and not bring you down. Amen. That's good. Good work. Okay, so that was really, really good. Okay, um, so, um, then, so last night I was reading through the book of Daniel, and I didn't finish it yet, it's like, maybe like a long chapter, I'm not sure, but, um, um, it's really good, I was reading about the, the future, I was like, man, I want to hear about the prophecies and stuff that's going on, and so with that, and she was like, um, she said, oh, look, look through the book of Daniel first, and so reading through Daniel, and you know when you, like, read through the Bible, it's like your eyes are, like, glued to the page, like, you can't even get off of it, it's, like, so good and so interesting, so, um, yeah, I want to tell you guys that, and, um, let's see, um, let me see, um, what was I going to do, oh, yeah, I was going to play one song here. Well, um, while we, um, while I, um, do something, so, you guys, you can listen to a song right quick. Commercial, of course.
So, I'm trying to get copyright here, but I probably will. Um, so, um, we're doing, I want to read this little verse about the Antichrist that's coming. Um, the Antichrist is coming to deceive the world. So, I was looking through Daniel, and um, I'm on chapter 11, verse 21, and this is when the Antichrist comes. And in this place arise in a vile person to whom they will not give the honor or royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by enter to. Well, I believe is that there's going to be a war first. Because when war comes, people are like, we need peace. We need peace now because we need to stop this war because we need peace. So, um, it says, with a force of a flood, they shall be swept away from him and be broken. Also, the prince of the covenant. And, and after the league is made with him, shall act deceitfully, for he shall come in before strong, with small number of people. He shall enter peaceably, and into the richest places of the province. And he shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his forefathers. He shall disperse among them, plunder, soil, riches, and means of fathers and forefathers. Forefathers is, is when Satan goes into, is when the Antichrist comes, and he, like, he has, he's in a man, so he's like... It acts like he has like father and stuff, and he'll come in peacefully. And he's like, Oh, you know what? Let's make a peace plan. Let's make a deal. It's like, make a deal, shake hands, probably. And I believe it. That's why I believe there's going to be a war first. And then the peace, because, you know, war comes peace. Because it doesn't really sound right. Peace comes war. But it mostly sounds war comes to peace first. Um. And uh, then I want to, um, yeah, that's it for that. Um, but still, um, First Thessalonians, um, um, four verse um, sixteen. Um, for the Lord and eighteen, for the Lord Himself. Oh, sorry. Shall descend with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then which we are alive and remain shall be no, shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall ever be of the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with his words. Brothers and sisters, we are in the final moments of the end of the days. And we are out of here soon. Our bridegroom is coming for us. Praise the Lord. And um, we are out of here soon, brothers and sisters. And so my brother went to go get his school clothes and school stuff today. I'm glad for that. And, like, three more days, school school starts Monday for me. And so I'm like, ugh. And then, you know, like, I, like my schedule's, like, messed up because, I mean, I should have told him that. But then I thought about, oh, okay, I'll call the school tomorrow. And I was like, you can't. I'm like, oh, yeah, tomorrow's Saturday. She's like, tomorrow's Saturday. I'm like, great. <laughs> Sorry if you guys can't understand what I'm saying. I'm ADHD, so I talk, like, 90 miles per hour. I try to... Just slow down some. Um, anyways, um, I would like to share this, um, I would like to share this, um, thing. This thing that happened at school last year, hang on. About me sharing the gospel like a huge opportunity. We should take these opportunities when we get them and share the gospel because the Lord wants us to. And we're not doing the Lord wants us to when we're sinning. So this was, um, this one had to have been January the 30th, 2019. Um, it was after school and I was waiting for the bus. A girl named Virginia came up to me and said, Jesus is coming. But she didn't mean like, Jesus, she's like, Jesus is coming soon. I mean like that. Because, you know, I told her Jesus comes in and she like laughed. And then she's like, hey, Jesus is coming soon. Um. I said, I know. That's my mom said, I know. Then she came to me and told me, and she said, tell me a story. I said, what kind? She said, about Jesus. I said, which one? She said, about him coming back. She asked me, why is he coming back? At first I said, because he is. Then I said, to rapture his church. She said, there are a lot of churches around here. I said, in other words, church as Christians. Then she said, how do you know... And she said, how do I know if I'm saved? I said, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and has to be forgiven? It looked like she was going to cry, but she turned it to laughter. Deep down, she knew that she was doing something wrong. Then she was talking about sins. I said, having sex is a sin. If you're not married, it is. 
So she carried on laughing and said, well, I already sinned and laughed. I said, you can be forgiven from your sins. Then she said, how do you know if you sin? I, I said, you have this feeling when you know you're doing something wrong. It's, I said, Satan wants you to keep doing it. Then, then I told her, I think I also told her, that when the Holy Spirit tells you not to do it, it means the Holy Spirit's talking to you. So, and that was my, my big opportunity I got. I'm so glad I got that. Um, this was, this is my, um, this is my diary about my dad, about when I grieved about my dad and stuff. I'm doing a lot there, though. Um, and yes, um, what's his name? Maureen Santiago, what's her name? Maureen Santiago. I still have the thing whenever you tell me what caught, why, and, okay, look, listen, and, mm, look, listening, and caught, and why. I still got this in my journal, thanks to you. Um, I want to thank you, Maureen, for, um, all the, um, the nice things that you have said to me, and, and the things, all the nice things you said to me about the Lord and stuff. Thank you, and, um, thank you for everybody that says God bless you and stuff. Thank you, YouTubers, for being so nice to me. Thank you for subscribing for, to my channel. I mean, I really want to get a thousand likes, a thousand subscribers, so I can go live and share the gospel. But, you know, that's only on phone, so where you can't go live. Then, I made a rapture letter. Um, I'll share my rapture letter. If you're getting this letter, you have been left behind. The Lord has come back for his Christians, so we want to have so we won't have to face his wrath. First Thessalonians four verse sixteen through eighteen says, For the Lord himself shall descend with from heaven with the voice of our angel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then which will alive and remain shall be caught together to meet them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the clouds. This we make this we should meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hopefully it's not too late for you. May God be with you always. It will happen in a twinkle of an eye that's fast. Don't accept the mark of the beast 666, which people probably won't be right here right now because people are, well, a lot of people are believing in the deception that we're going to be um, captured by aliens, caught up by aliens. So, I mean, it's like this. In the tribulation, the people that are left behind, it's like Satan is the puppet master, and they are the puppets because they, because he's got their minds. He's like controlling their minds because they're believing in all this stuff. But it says that um, that God will send a delusion. But so it's like Satan like got their minds. And I know a lot of people are saying don't go to Walmart because it's dangerous. Do you trust in God? Of course you do. If you go to Walmart, and if you were to die today, you'd be in him in heaven. So if God wanted you to go to Walmart, and you didn't go, and if you were going to die, then you still should die for him if he wanted you, if he wanted, if it was your time to die. You shouldn't. I seen in this video, the mark of the beast, um, a distant thunder, they put these fake chips in their hands. They shouldn't do that because they, they needed to die for Christ. Because we don't try to hide that off. If God wants us to die, then it's our time. And at, officially, at the end, um, it, say, it says a song, Redemption Draw of Nine, my favorite, one of my favorites now. Um, and whenever they get their heads cut off, it's so sad, but they don't show that part, though. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So, God bless you. I'm going to be on later. Maybe, maybe not. God bless you. Have a great day. And Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready for his return?